Before we get started, I'm just going to give you a quick warning that some of this video is a little bit direct, but understand it is all said with maximum kindness and your best interests at heart. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So how should we do it? Well, if you do less than four times a week, it's completely pointless because you spend more than half the week forgetting everything that you've learned. So that just just don't do that. And if you're doing anything significantly difficult, like a grade exam or something, then you need to be doing five practices per week consistently with very, very, very few slips. So four is the absolute minimum to achieve anything at all. Five to six is the gold standard. If you actually want to achieve something, you need to be doing that amount. You need to make it really easy for yourself to do. You have to have a solid system, time, place, day. On this day, I will practice at this time in this place. If you don't have a system, you know, if I say, what's your schedule? What's your practice schedule? What's your system? And you go, uh, right, Jimmy will often do that. Obviously, that person hasn't got a system. Someone who's playing really, really well consistently, they always have a system. They know exactly when they're going to do it. So a good time for me, I like to do it first thing after breakfast in the morning, because there is nobody calling my phone at that time. I'm not got friends trying to see me. I've not got all these other things. And also I'm very awake and energized at that time of day. The later it is in the day, the more variables are happening. There are people who want to see you, um, friends who want to hang out. There's all sorts of other things going on, things that you're not expecting. Whereas first thing in the morning, there isn't that much going on. So it's much, you've got this clear space. Also, later in the day, your energy levels are going to be lower. So you're going to have to use more self-discipline and grit and drive. And the more you have to strive and push, and the more you have to use your willpower and determination, the less likely you are to do it. You need to have a regular time and place. So it is an unconscious habit, not a conscious choice. If every day you do it at a different time and you have to actually sit down and stop what you're doing and think about it, it's destined to fail. The later on in the day, the harder it's gonna be. The more tired you are, the less likely you are to do it. The more willpower you need, the less likely you are to do it. The nearer it is to a meal time, right? When you're hungry again, you're gonna need way more willpower and determination. If you can't tell me the time, place and day, it's not going to happen. You're not going to do it. So if you've got football practice at the time where you would normally do it, then on that day, you need to have a different time on that particular day. You have to have a system. First thing in the morning, just after breakfast or, or whenever, that is the best possible time. Another thing you can do is you can mix it in with your homework. So if you're doing homework, well, this is homework. So it could be something you do before homework or during your homework, like weaved into your homework, or perhaps you could do the really difficult technical stuff first that you don't enjoy, then do a little bit of homework, then do the more fun stuff like the, the pieces. So to begin with, you could start off with your scales and arpeggios and all the stuff that no one wants to do, but that's really important to do, to be able to do. And then later on, further down the line, you can reward yourself by playing the songs and pieces and the stuff that you do enjoy. Okay, so I always first thing in the morning, I do the technical work, I do the bit that's a bit more grueling and difficult and requires the highest amount of willpower. And then after work or in the evening, that's when I play the songs and pieces that I just love doing. I don't need willpower or discipline to play my favorite songs and pieces, but I do to do my scales and arpeggios because I find it difficult as well. But if you don't do it, you won't be able to do the other stuff. I like to think of guitar practice like a meal. You've got the starter, the mains and the dessert, right? And the starter is vegetables, right? That has been proven to be the healthiest way to eat by eating your vegetables first. Right. And OK, it might not be very satisfying, but it's very good for your health. And in terms of guitar practice, it is essential that you do not skip the starter. That is the scales, arpeggios, chords and drills that I have designed specifically for your needs. You don't skip the starter. Now, the main course, this is the songs and pieces that we've agreed upon. And ideally, you should enjoy them. Most people do. 
Um, if you don't, then it's still designed to teach you something. You don't skip your mains. The main course in nutritional terms would be the healthy fats and proteins. And now the dessert, this is where you're eating sugars and starches, right? Now that is unhealthy. It can rot your teeth and harm you. And that is some random rubbish you found on the internet from some unqualified dude in his bedroom. I'm gonna show you how to play Wonderwall wrong. Okay. And I highly recommend you skip the dessert. Unless you have a healthy dessert, like good quality fresh fruit. And that is something that I have agreed on with you, which we both know is at your level. If you're learning something off the internet that you would need my help to do, you're gonna mess it up. You're gonna get all kinds of bad habits and blind spots and it's gonna mess up your development as a guitarist. Really, let's say you are at grade six standard and you teach yourself something off the internet that is grade six or seven standard, that's gonna seriously harm you. Whereas if you're gonna teach yourself something without my supervision, right, it needs to be a good two levels below. So really, it shouldn't be teaching yourself anything beyond grade four standard, maybe grade five if you've got a distinction and you really smashed it out of the park, right? So it should be one to two notches below the level that you're at so you don't make any mistakes and uh, develop any horrendous bad habits and blind spots. My guitar is on the stand. All I have to do is grab it. It is permanently plugged in to the amp music stand it's all set up i literally just grab it switch it on and i go you've got to remove as much friction as possible you need to do it in as few steps as physically possible or it just won't happen so if you live in two houses i recommend having two guitars it's well worth it it's very very doable and it's absolutely necessary so yes it is gonna cost a little bit to have two guitars if you live in two places and to make sure that you have got a music stand and a guitar stand. It's gonna cost, but it ain't gonna cost as much as messing up your posture for not having the music stand. And it ain't gonna cost as much as the cost of regret for not taking this seriously. If you don't have a solid system, then you are throwing money away. Don't do that. Baby, I don't really want to know how your garden grows. I just want to fly. Stay tuned, folks, because next week we got my brother from another mother joining us, Missing Teeth Michael, and he's going to show you how to piss off your neighbors. Buffalo Bill, over and out.